I'm Jeremy Hilton. I'm the Vice President of Processor Development at D-Wave Systems. I'm responsible for the Processor Development Group, which involves the design, test, and development and release of the quantum processor that D-Wave makes, which is the underpinning of the quantum computers that we build. Each of these black systems is a quantum computer. Inside that system is a thumbnail-sized quantum processor. In order to operate and develop quantum processors, we require a fairly extreme operating environment, which includes ultra-low temperatures and an ultra-low magnetic environment. And to achieve those, we need a fairly large and sophisticated system. The main room behind us houses the quantum processor, and the data racks in the front hold the quantum server, where users can access and program the quantum processor. And the other data racks include the cooling system, which includes pumps and, uh, and is responsible for the chirping sound you can hear in the background. Inside the room, be before we get to the quantum processor, there are many layers of shielding which allow us to create the low noise magnetic environment the chip sits in. If you look inside the data racks, you'll see that they don't contain what you would normally expect. So here we have uh, some scroll pumps, which are mechanical parts associated with pulling vacuum on the fridge inside the room behind. So this is obviously highly unusual for, uh, for a data rack, but has been integrated so that it, it wouldn't look out of place in a, in a data center. And in fact, the, uh, the requirements for running the system are consistent with all the services that would be available in a data center, which would include chilled water and power predominantly. In, in this rack is the quantum server which allows users from uh, anywhere in the world to interact with the processor itself. This server is receiving information from users, converting that into the machine language of the processor, and sending that machine language into the room behind where high precision analog electronics will convert those signals into electrical pulses, which are sent through cables into the refrigerator and down through the cooling system to the, uh, the ultra low temperature of the processor. It executes its problem and then, and then data from the processor is returned to the server and returned to the user. And the system is very flexible and that users can be programming in whatever language they're comfortable with and uh, in interacting with it either uh, with this system in their data center or, or even here in D-Wave's lab. The quantum bits in our processor store information in the form of little magnetic fields. The zero and one correspond to a little magnetic spin. The controls over the qubits are all in the form of magnetic fields. So the quantum processor is very sensitive to magnetic noise and the magnetic environment that it sits in. In order to keep that magnetic environment really low, as well as support the ultra low temperature that it's operating at, this system behind me has about 16 layers of shielding between where I'm standing and where the chip sits at the center. These, these black panels are really for aesthetic purposes and they contain, they integrate these data racks with a shielded room, which is the first of those layers of shielding and is filtering out RF signals. So if you were to stand inside the room and close the door, your cell phone would stop receiving a signal. The fridge itself has a combination of radiation shields as well as magnetic shields, which help support the ultra-low temperature operating environment and achieve the ultra-low magnetic field. Inside the room, we have to keep electromagnetic noise very low. So even things like power outlets aren't allowed because power can be quite noisy without extensive filtering. So inside the room, we have the cooling system and these are radiation shields. So this is the next layer of shielding inside the room. The chip itself, the quantum processor, is sitting at the bottom of this array of shields. And uh, this is, again, the first of several more layers. Inside these shields is vacuum, which is the insulation of the cooling system. When we want to uh, swap the processor or conduct maintenance on the fridge, we warm the system up, we remove these shields, and then the processor is accessible as well as all of the internals of the refrigerator.